conference, he's got to have a third bag. And I think it's pretty clear that Mockaby and Reggie Love um, were those first two guys. But mm -hmm. kind of talk about the development. What have you seen from the other group kind of to earn some playing time? Uh, well, the fight is just to become more consistent because they have the talent. Uh, two, two very different uh, running backs. Uh, Jaheim Merriweather is tall, long, crazy athletic. Um, but it, it's about being consistent. You know, the third running back you got to put in the game. Um, you want him to be explosive. You want to be able to trust him. Uh, and at some point, if he has to carry the load, he can, right? Um, and he's getting there. Um, he's processing the game much better. He's slowing it down. Uh, his mental mistakes are becoming less and less. Now it's a matter of being able to play at the tempo we need you to play at consistently, right? Being able to get over uh, a mistake or, or a missed assignment. Um, in the game, you don't have time to, to soak uh, and, and, you know, and overthink it. You got to move on to the next play. So that, that's, some of that's being a freshman. So we just keep pounding reps on him. And uh, he's making a, a world of progress. And then obviously, um, uh, Elijah um, is just a pistol, man. Uh, he has exceeded all the expectations. Uh, he's came out and had a fantastic camp, uh, but obviously he's 5'8", 190 pounds, so you got to be smart about how you use him. Uh, but he's an explosive little dude. And he's, he's, he's got it. Now it's a matter of being confident in all situations, uh, particularly in third down situations where you may have to piss up, pick up a blitzer. Uh, and, you know, he's identifying them very well, but understanding how much force I have to put through uh, somebody at the Big Ten level is a little different. Involved with, with helping Devin um, sort of make his body. I know he maybe didn't always take his diet seriously, and I mean he's gotten a lot bigger. It looks like uh, absolutely no. It, it's a, it takes it takes the it took the it takes a village, right? Um, it started with uh, you know our strength coach, Coach Rowe, having a real conversation with him about the importance of it. Um, then obviously I was harping on him, uh, like, hey man, listen. At the end of the day, if you want to have a chance to to take the next step in, in your evolution. Uh, you can't play in the Big Ten at 185, 190 pounds. Um, you know, he played last year pretty banged up, uh, and it affected a lot of aspects of his game. Um, and, you know, it's not just the weight, it's the strength. Uh, you want to be the guy and play confidently. Um, that's kind of the separation between him and Tyrone last year. Tyrone was 205, 210 pounds, and he was an uber-confident guy because he trusted his body. Uh, but he had put in six years of work to change his body. Uh, Mock went from being a, a walk-on to having great success. And, you know, I want to say afterthought, but to some degree an afterthought. And now it's here. Uh, and how do I maximize this? And at the end of the day, he bought in. Um, now, I had to make some phone calls. I called mom. I called dad. Uh, I put Mock on the spot a little bit. You know, got some uh, more information about uh, his eating habits from people who have been around him his entire life. Um, and then we all came together. Um, and, and, you know, had some tough conversations about where your future could be if you change your body. Uh, and playing at 200 to 210 pounds is a lot different than playing at 185, 190. And ultimately, uh, he's a professional. He understood the task, and he went to work. And, again, I give credit to Coach Rowe, our strength coach, uh, Ellen, our, uh, you know, our nutritionist, and, and Mock himself for taking it serious and wanting to help his team progress and, and ultimately help himself be the best version of himself. So how does he look different? He's a stronger runner. Uh, he's more explosive in and out of his cuts, which he's always been really quick. Um, but, you know, he could get knocked off line a little bit. You know what I mean? We call him crazy legs for a reason. Um, I, I, I like that uh, aspect of his game, but I want him to be stronger when he puts his feet in the ground. Hey, you can get knocked off and your feet can go, legs can go flying everywhere, but I want your feet back in the ground. Stay on your feet, finish the run. Um, and, in, and most importantly, if you watch him in protections, he's just stronger. Uh, doesn't get knocked off as much. And again, fellas, this is a game of inches, being able to, to stick and stay on a, on a backer or, or have to help on the three technique because he looped around uh, and, and anchor down uh, so, so HUD can step up and, 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 and get that ball thrown is, is a huge deal. So uh, he just physically looks stronger and he looks more confident, to be quite frank. When you guys were looking for another back through the portal last year, were you looking for someone that complimented Devin in some way or was it just, we want a productive back? Both. Right, both. Um, so, if if you look at Reggie Love's history, like he he was the number two to the the Walker Award winner, right? Uh, he understands the assignment of being a team player in the backfield, uh, and when his number was called on, he produced. Um, and then you see the kid in his in his totality. You know, he's a starting tailback in the Big Ten. 
uh, that's pretty dang good in a system where they pound the ball. They expect you to be able to pass protect because they do so much play action. Um, and then, you know, you sit down and, and you have the, the tougher conversations about what you want to do with your future. Um, you know, have you maximized your talent? Uh, what are the things that, 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 that you need uh, to elevate? And do we match? And all the things that I believe in, that Coach Walters believe in, is, is Reggie Love. Um, he is tough as nails. He is a, in my opinion, an, an every down uh, box running back who can do the dirty work for you. He's quicker than you realize, got a little bit more burst. Um, but he had he has more to his tank, right? And he doesn't have a crazy amount of yardage on his body, right? So there's some still some 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 tread there. Uh, so if we need to lead on him, we can. Um, and then his football IQ, his leadership. There are so many other aspects that you want out of a one A one B, um, and it's just what happens. They complement each other uh, uh, just beautifully. Last year, you obviously had to retrain Tyrone how to play running back because he'd been a receiver for so long. Was it easier just naturally? Fitting Reggie in when he got here? Yes. Um, well, I, let, me, let me say this, yes and no. Because with Tyrone, Tyrone wanted to be the best version of himself. So there wasn't, there wasn't a challenge, right? I had a great student who wanted it. I mean, he wasn't fighting uh, it. Um, and with Reggie, um, again, he wanted to get better. He wanted to get coached. And that's part of that journey you take when you're trying to find a transfer. Does he feel our culture? Um, this is still a developmental program, and I don't care how good you are. There, I'm going to try to get you to be the best version of yourself, right? As good as Maccabee is, it's my job to help him, help him see the, 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 the deficiencies in his game and help him improve upon them. And it's the same thing with Reggie. And I think you'll see a better version of Reggie. Um, you know, we just had a conversation about he didn't think he had a very good practice because he was working on some things, slowing some things down, trying to get that picture to slow down. And I'm like, son, you average probably four to five yards a carry. You know, you want six to seven yards of carry. Well, you were slowing the game down, trying to get your body in the right position to be able to finish run. Well, it's not live tackling. If we were playing live football, you probably did average six or seven yards of carry. So it's perspective, right? Um, and the fact that he can see the game that way and feel the game that way is, is, is fantastic. In your mind, is there a battle right now to be the guy who's on the field for the first snap at, at tailback, or does that go to Devin because he has tenure? Um, there is no battle. Maccabee's, Maccabee's that guy. But if you pay attention to who I am, um, they're both starters. I know that's what it says in the ledger. Like, it doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean, if we called a play that was preferential to Reggie for the first call, Reggie's going to be starting. I, it, that's, that's the bottom line. We're trying to win. And that's the great thing about the guys I got is they just want to win. You know, they have their own singular goals. But, you know, they both know who they are and, and, and what we need them to be. You know, you might be the you might be the second guy off the bench. Well, being Tyrone last year, the second guy off the bench wasn't bad, right? Um, we we all hope for that. So um, that that part's the ego thing, and those two kids don't don't have an ego. Is that production you got from Devin and Tyrone? Is that just what you guys envision, kind of for this group? Well, I mean, I mean, I, that's what you want, right? Like it, w it would be fantastic for us to be able to run for two thousand yards again this year uh, as as a, as a whole offense. Um, what you want is just consistency, you know. Even with Tyrone and Devin, you just want consistency because when they were consistent, they were on the field doing their job uh, correctly. Um, you, you can obviously see what they are, right? Um, you, you, they they, they kind of play free, right? You know, you don't try to mold Tyrone and make him be something he's not. Excuse me, right? You just, hey man. Trust me, press a little bit more, do this, right? And it's the same thing with these two. You know, the biggest thing is make sure that we're, our scheme fits what they do. Um, you know, and, and those kids are, are sharp enough to be able to maximize the play calls, right? Uh, and there's going to be games where we may have to pass it a lot more. Well, they've got to show off the other aspect of their game, which is being tremendous out the backfield, catching the football, and, and helping in pass protection. Mentioned Elijah's size. Is that just going to always be a, a part of his game that he's going to you're going to have to use him in that way, or are you trying no. to get him somewhere physically? Uh, in my opinion, no. He, you got, guys, remember he's a redshirt freshman, sure. right? Um, I would say a third of the guys who, who play on Sunday at tailback or get drafted are below five nine. Um, so it's perception. Being five eight one ninety, isn't small. He's just five eight, right? Um, when he really gets comfortable with his body, he got here, he was 162, 163 pounds. As he embraces that strength and that body change and realizes if I just accelerate and my force through somebody at, at his speed, which is unbelievable, um, it's hard to tackle, right? So it's just making the adjustment. Um, but for him, it's just confidence, right? Confidence, confidence, confidence. Um, and the more he plays, the better he gets.
So uh, I, I got no, I got no worries about it. It's just him understanding um, how I need to get the job done will be different different uh, than Reggie Love, for example.